Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whichever way you're, uh, whatever time zone you're in. Uh, I was starting this meeting early and I'm not able to talk today. So anyway, I'm going to skip all the intro stuff. Just want to remind people that these meetings are recorded for those people that aren't able to attend in person at this time zone, whatever it might be for them. And we're going to go straight into the bugs. Um, Rather than deal with the couple of the bugs that came in in the last little bit ago, I'm thinking we will jump straight to the old bugs and just use this as kind of the end of the year, last day of the year, just kind of mop up some of these five-year, six-year bugs, and then we'll come back and do, uh, you know, all the normal stuff when we start again next year, which is only in huh, one day. Sound good? Works for me. All right. So I think this is our number one five-year thing. We're going to do that. All right, up here at the top, 159. I need to remember that number because I want to see how far we get. And if you want to take a guess how many we're going to get through, uh, now would be a good time to put it in the comments. Um, I think I'm going with just, oh, Bob just took mine. Oh, man, literally like seconds. I almost hit enter. Fine, then I'm going to do 59. And we're going to go from there. I don't know how we're going to do 59 tonight, but all right, here we go. Component group attribute. Component group attribute, except it was binding on one feature. Oh, so this would say this component can be in this is in this component group. Well, that's very backwards. You'd still have to get something to pull in that component somewhere. Well, this is kind of like component at feature, right? The, the idea is you can pull, you can author your component and tell it where to go without needing a parent and then a component ref. But you still need a component ref somewhere. You have to do something to bring the fragment in, otherwise it's not going to end up getting hooked up. This one I have a harder time with. Because um, this is a way of setting the primary feature, which can sometimes be a pain. Well, yeah, but that that's kind of... that's. It's more an implementation detail behind the scenes about how things get hooked up. If, I mean, think think if authoring a component, you know, created the component group on the fly as necessary, and then something had a component group ref to that created component group. Hmm. Basically. Great. In, in my mind, and I don't know if I opened this because I don't know, I didn't, because uh, I actually wanted this feature long, long ago because the the whole component group, component ref, looks a lot like duplication. You know, say the typical thing, and I think actually Heat does this now because I changed it to do it, is where you create this, you know, you have this file with a bunch of components in it, and you know, somewhere up top or at bottom, there's a component group that has component refs to all of those things. Unlike you know, you've you've lost all the advantage of the of the fragments and everything, but it's like this is what this is what you wanted. You wanted a, a you know group of components. Yeah, you, know, you wanted a you know merge module equivalent or whatever. Um, I'm just trying to think through the weird things that could happen with this. How's this harder than component than the feature attribute? What's that? How is this harder than feature the the feature attribute? I don't know that it's how is it harder? Or I guess different. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure how feature works. It's a backward reference. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm just struggling. How do you get the component ref to pull in the component if it's in a fragment? Sorry, say that again? I, I'm struggling with where would you put the component ref to pull in the fragment? You wouldn't. You would use a component group ref. But the component... Yeah, but all right, let's say this component is in another... in its isolated fragment. Yep. And the component group is in another fragment. Yep. And then you say, all right, component group ref, you bring in that component group. The component will never get referenced. It'll be left floating. Sorry. No, you're right. The the idea here, it has to be that that the 
component group attribute hooks up the references such that referencing the component group will, you know, implicitly reference the component. Yeah, that doesn't work. That's the part that doesn't work, because then you'd end up, anytime you pulled in a library that happened to have a random fragment with a random component group name that matched yours, suddenly your component would come flying in based on whether or not you included that library, which is like, that's very backwards from the way the Wix tool set works. That's the thing that we don't do today. It was the same problem I had with directory, the way that um, we discussed the directory stuff a few days ago where you could do a, if you did the, uh, if you allowed duplicate directories to be merged, you know, we were talking about, and then you add a directory ref some, from somewhere, suddenly you could pull in, one directory ref could pull in a gazillion fragments. Um, invisible, yeah, I, right? And that list is then changes um, based off what you include on the link line, or on the, yeah, on the uh, link line, which is just, it's just not, it, it's the, it's the managed code single compile class way, not the uh, C++ way, which means it's going to be very different, um, which is the way simplified I, Wix works, not the way traditional Wix works. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm still confused. I, I, if you have a library with a component group in it, a normally authored component group in it, and you have a component group ref that just happens. I'm sorry, you lost me there. I, I didn't get that analogy. Um, well, it, it's just the any time that you pull in a, a component group that happens to have the same name as a component, you're going to pull. It, it's essentially like component groups are now suddenly partials. Right, so you have a partial component group because now you can take a component group, define it as empty, right, aka partial, like you know, like C sharp partial, and then yeah. go out there and put component group on all of your components, spread them all over the place, and now yeah. whenever you link, you're going to get that component group populated because it's a partial, which we don't do that anywhere in traditional Wix. It, it's a very simplified Wix way of thinking of the world, but it's not a traditional Wix way of um. thinking of the world. And, I, and I've, I've always been very hesitant to do that because when you do that, the world opens up in very interesting ways. Um, okay. Uh, I don't see how that's any different than the feature attribute, though. The feature... Um, I'm not exactly sure. The feature I'm pretty sure is setting the primary feature for the component. Because when you pull in a component into multiple, uh, if you pull a component group into multiple features, it's yeah. extremely challenging to set the primary feature. So you get this error all the time. So I was pretty sure that component feature was just a way so that if you put a component in a component group and then you put that component group in multiple features, your component could say which one is features, which of the features is primary. No, I don't think that's the case. I believe the feature attribute is doing exactly what we were talking about. Um, feature string identifies a feature to which this component belongs as a shorthand for a child component ref element of the feature element. Right, but... I think it also sets it prior. But even but even then, the com by referencing the feature, you do not get the component. You still have to reference the component somehow. I disagree with you. I don't think that's how it works. I think if you use component at feature, you get that component in that feature. And when you reference the feature, you get that component. So let's... That, no way. <laughs> I, I don't know how that would work because the, when the component gets hit, let's say the component's in its fragment all by itself. Yep. That means the reference lives in the section with the component, which means if there's nothing in there, like... I don't, if that section never gets referenced, that reference out of the section never gets evaluated, which means the component will never get pulled in unless something has a component ref to it or some other random thing in the component pro in the, the section. Okay, I'm assigning this bug to me. I will create a sample if 
feature works that way, then let's bring it back and figure out if we can make it work for component okay. group. Fair enough. Yeah, it's, uh, it's these things that we're just playing with like gravity here <laughs> of the waste tool set. And so we make sure that if we don't make everything start flying into the sun. Yes, but the fun thing is we can change the laws, the laws of No, 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 I, I, I understand. And there's a lot of things we've done in Simplified Wix that kind of made us find ways of doing that without blowing up the rest of the world, too. I'm okay with that, I suppose. <laughs> Yes. All right. So that went nowhere. All right. Well, I guess it went somewhere, but nowhere. All right. So if we had a redistributable for the Wix components. We do, right? Now we do. We have the MSIs. Yeah, I suppose. I suppose that's it. Yeah, it's probably better that way. They're actually organized better. So, yeah, well, arguably better. If not, we could fix that, but I think they're organized pretty well. Yeah, I think so. Pyro should check media sequencing for overlapping. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So they can't tell. Interesting. This is um. This is a. Um, can we fix this? Because of the whole media attribute, not have no knowledge about the previous patch. Be like, you can't tell if the two patches are overlapping. Um. Well, I agree with the. Uh, last sentence. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, generally, generally people, you know, just throw up some big number. Big number. Yeah, it's like, unless you're well, all right, so it, it's not wrong, so we, we should keep it and see if we ever come around to a good way of doing it. Yeah, yeah, right. that's worth It'd be looking. nice for it to, you know, the waste tool set to say, hey, yeah, don't do that. And be like, oh, right, I forgot, or whatever. It's possible, yes. I don't know. I, generally, things that help people get the right thing, particularly patching, I'm generally for. Yeah, for sure. Um I don't know if this is something we can do in 3x though. Sure. I. Yeah. Okay. Well, it might be possible. Yeah. Right. Well, we can leave it there for now. Binary variables are only provided for versioned binaries. .NET. There are cases where the binary variables are helpful, like when registering a type of private assembly located in the registry. Checking every possible file for assembly identity. Oh, I see. We only look at things going into GAC right now. Yeah, we extended it with the with the file version version info, but um, I'm not against this if we can figure out how to do it in a way that doesn't kill perf. Um, What's left? I'm sorry. Um, well, no, it's basically coming down to can we get these variables, basically only look these variables up for when they're listed, right, if you use it. And then we can error and say, you know, hey, you asked for, you know, the assembly file version on a file that's not an assembly. Error. And people can go, oh, whoops. Because today, I, it, it, I think it is only available on .NET. That does sound right. Yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm like, for, for a random file that has no version info, What's left to get? Oh, nothing. I wouldn't get any of that. Or are they talking? Sorry, are they talking about just random DLLs that are assemblies? These are assemblies. Okay. It's sorry, private yeah, assemblies. I get it now. Yes, it's a private assembly. Right now, it's only for stuff that goes into the GAC. Got it. Okay. Right. At least 
It's been a while since I looked at this stuff. So, anyway. Uh, yeah, we could do that. I think we could do it in 3x. I don't think it would be breaking. Uh, Wix variable resolver should validate against table definitions. Um, yeah, we should do this if we don't. I don't remember where we do this validation. But yeah, we should, we could do this. Because it wouldn't be wrong. <laughs> but it might be breaking. But I'm fine if we do it in four, because honestly, this probably is going to be done in four. Or rather, let me say it differently. If this is done in three, it'll have to be done differently in four, because there's a lot of work that's going to go into this space around variable resolver and stuff, because it's, the performance in this space is really bad. The design of this thing is not, well, the design of this came in like 3.5 or something like that, so it's shoved in there versus designed well. So I'm fine with this in 4. It's up to you okay. in 3x. Yeah, I'm, I put it in 4 just because I think it you know, could start breaking. It's a big feature. Preserve comments and SQL scripts. Um, I don't think we can. If I remember correctly, it's been a long time since I looked at this code. It's a long, long time ago. You can't send comments to SQL. It's like it has to be stripped out, otherwise the SQL things blow up. Oh, the action does work, which uses that to provide script text DB server. So I don't know how SQL script could I don't think this works. <laughs> <laughs> or at least it didn't the last time I wrote this code, which was admittedly a very long time ago. Because we didn't do this work just for fun, stripping out all the comments. It was a pain in the butt. Um, I have no data. I don't think we can do this. Oh, within a function, procedure should be perceived. Yeah, I don't think we can do this. So let's let's send that, and if they come back, they can. But that's six years ago. Nobody's asked for this since then. So I don't think you can do that. Um, if I wish to modify UI, oh, dialog subclassing. I remember this discussion, or a discussion we have about this. Uh, we've probably had several over the years. It's it's a cool concept. I have no idea how we would do it. Um, one of the times we discussed it, anyway, um, it was not as uh, grandiose as this. Oh. Uh, <laughs> well, it's, again, as far as for what's you know probably reasonable, um, based on the idea of of the floating publish elements. We talked about having floating control elements. Oh, uh, gosh. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, and even that alone gets really trippy with with tab order. <laughs> we had that oh, bug geez. last week. Um, yeah, it, it, it's... <sighs> All right. So, so Christopher brings up the point because uh, Jacob... Oh, no, Jacob's here. Is it always Jacob that brings it up, the whole... So we have managed bootstrap. We we have burn now. Do we do this anymore? Well, do we suspend general, the bug general and carry problem? On? Who who's interested in working on MSI UI features? Um, How about we so suspend this and if someone wants to do it, it's interesting. But it's it's a lot harder than it probably looks. It's it's a huge amount of work, and no no, I don't see anyone taking it on. When right. it's not wrong. I don't know about this implementation, but you know it's not wrong. Right, and, right. Okay, I'm I'm fine with that. Let's suspend it. Carry on. We'll see where it goes. Copy to output directory. Oh, I think this works now, but only because we have a copy of the common targets. I'm pretty. This should work in four as well. I'm okay with saying that we fixed it. Yeah, that's one of those big MS build things. 
yeah. move install UI sequence out of dialogs and into UIs. Includes the following. Uh, yeah, okay. Go, go ahead and read the threads. A very long thread of stuff back and forth. Oh, wow. Uh, the, the short version of the story is uh, when when Derek added the the floating published stuff. That's when we we pulled out of the dialogues. Yep. Um, all the well, most of the um, actions, most of the the control events. Um, some we left in there because well, why would anyone ever want to change them? Perhaps. <sighs> Famous last words. Yeah. Um, so the biggest one from this particular bug is someone wanted to change the cancel dialog. Um, actually, I think they wanted to remove the cancel dialog. Um, okay. Since, you know, apps aren't supposed to confirm on cancel, they're supposed to offer undo. Not exactly how it works, but, you know, in this case, but whatever. Um, right now, cancel, because it was something that every dialog needed or every dialog had and was identical for every dialog it, I didn't pull it out um, and so yeah right now that's kind of what prompted this particular bug um, there's no way to not have the cancel dialog um, I believe that everything else is everything except the cancel dialog well, I think everything else, you know, is, is like fixed or as fixed as Fair I enough. think it, it ought to be. So I'm I'm kind of ambivalent on this. Do we suspend this like the previous one? Do we put it and say someone could fix this in four if they wanted? Do we suspend uh, okay it in the four? Either. I, I'm okay with either of those things. Do we suspend it in the four? Because I'm, does this break three? It seems like this changes. Oh, it, for sure, it would. So, so we suspend this in the floor, and we go, yeah, here's a thing that could be done. That works for me. We probably should put the the previous bug in four X as well, because I'm pretty sure that's not going to be a backwards compatible change. Uh, well, maybe yes. With, uh, no. Well, I don't know. Seems like a reasonable place to put those. <laughs> All right. Optionally populate MSI patch sequence product code. Uh, are tied to products, products during. And then A refers to that. That's that. Optionally tie patch families to products that contain resources. Ah. Interesting. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, man, this is pretty, all this stuff is so magical when you get down to it. Changing the magic of it, I'm not sure. Well, th yeah, this would definitely be something. Yeah, you know, we'd have to take in four X. Um, I, I see where he's going. I, I yeah, I do too. It's interesting. It's it's not bad, mostly because you know patch families are so loose. Um, yeah, you know, there's a whole bunch of stuff around patching that I wish we could do better. How, yeah. Do we put this in four X and have the discussion there? Whenever we get around to patching, which may one day be 5x, if the way things go, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think I think that's worthwhile. Yeah, I, I, I think it needs more discussion. And yeah, need to sit down and think about more of the edge cases that are that are covered here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Torch should bind transforms from Wix outs, and MST from diffing to Wix outs. Does it do that yet? 
I want to say it has to, based on what I know of certain patch build systems. Well, this is 2007, so that was a very long time ago. Yeah, it was. Um, two weeks out. <sighs> Trying to remember before the magic came and that patch build system, I worked on a previous patch build system. I want to say that it used Wix outs instead of Wix PDBs. But no, that's that's incorrect. No. Not if you're changing any files. But okay. Well, uh, yeah, that's a whole separate thing, right? Yes. Um. I suspect, I, I agree, I think that this works to the extent that anyone cares about Wix apps at the moment. Yeah, well, there's that. Um, all right, so 3x, or, that, or is it fixed? I, 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 let's mark it fixed, and okay. if this particular submitter comes back, you know. He's still around, so we have actually have hope of that. That's nice. uh, rollback scripts, add quick macros. Rollback script functionality. Ah, in Dark Ages, you wrote, yes. Now you just call function. That's right. Some quick macros. No. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. No. <laughs> we have one macro set. Exit on failure. We try to avoid the rest. Oh. No. Oh, oh, macros instead of calling the WCA functions. Yeah, no. Call the functions. <laughs> um, current Wix enabling log on a service. It would be nice if you could act. Yeah, we have this bug already. <laughs> Another one of these. Although, admittedly, this one is older. Asking for more rights on users, which we've taken those other bugs. Could dupe this to those. Group tag, create local groups. Yes. I don't think we do this yet today. Group creating <coughs> groups is such a pain. Yeah, we definitely don't do it. Yeah, so I, I agree. It'd be nice if we do it. It's not as easy. There's a lot of hard things to think about when you do that, but yeah, anyway. Decom permissions at app ID level. Yes. Hey, look, someone actually likes Wix. Granted, it was 2007, so maybe they don't feel the same way, but... Maybe they're just using it silently out there. But yeah, this makes sense to me. Permissions on app IDs makes sense. Um, additive? And it is additive. I don't know right. how hard it because decom permissions are really kind of tricky. I'm not sure if anybody will ever do it, if anybody cares oh. about decom. Decom. Yeah. Uh, current That's version, great. setup build.exe. Yeah. Don't care. Setup build is dead. to tell Linker to build a particular disk ID without generating anything else. What? Oh, empower clever builds, smart enough to know which ones need a cab. There's a bug somewhere else. Um, oh, actually, no, sorry, it's the comment on this one. Um, that That's actually kind of interesting. Um, the idea that you could put all of the Wix lib into a single cab. Well, first of all, if you built that cab as part of building the Wix lib, then you, you could just use it, dump it. Yeah, you wouldn't have to recab it, which is an interesting thing. Um, uh, but at, it's also at, at the, this point, I think media template and our auto generation of cabs is probably a better way to go. And the problem is you don't get any. There's no. There's no build perf wins. The problem with media template is that everything gets randomly assigned. Well, I, I'm not. fine if you want to say we should improve media template, but I don't know that I, we should go through and create a path through the build that builds just a general a specific disk ID. That's well, going to be a pain. Yeah, sorry. I, I, I was, like I said, mostly I was interested in the in the Wixlib um, thing. from. Yeah, but if Wixlibs don't stay cabs, then it doesn't matter. Well, even if they're... You could, you could still store a cab even if it's in a different container if, sure. if you want to do this thing as a perf benefit. Is it a perf when? I suppose. Oh, you don't have to rebuild the cab. Yeah. I guess I don't know how, how many 
yeah, I don't know, binary wix libs and passing data around that way versus building wix libs that refer to their data on a, you know, a, a build share. So this, we, we could talk about this feature down here, which is completely separate from this feature. I don't think we should do this one. I think we should invest in media template and stuff like that more than we should try to build a single disk ID and that kind of stuff. Um, okay. I have no strong feelings on this particular feature. Yeah. Like to me, this is like pre-populate the cab cache with specific disk IDs. Yeah. I'm like, uh, uh, you, you go through so much to get to that point. <laughs> it would be challenging to stop in the middle. And I'm just like, uh, really? Yeah. Never mind. I've, I, I don't I don't have strong feelings on this one on this particular feature. Yeah. The one I care about or the one I find interesting is is the Wixlib thing. Um so I can open that as a separate feature. Yeah, to, this to me is cab cache. Basically let the Wix tool set handle the cleverness. Maintain your cab cache, and everything else should just work. Yeah, except the media template kind of blows that out. No, no, no. This is, so if you were to do this, right, the cab cache will do what he wants here once you build. Okay. Media template, getting smarter and that kind of stuff, I, I mean, we could do that. I that would make sense to me um, separately, but that's a separate thing. Um, assigning your disk IDs based off Wix libs is another thing that could be done, but it's going to be challenging to avoid disk IDs. <laughs> well, yeah, the, the follow-up comment says it is. Oh, yeah. The problem is we expose disk ID as the media ID, and yep. MSI stupidly chose that as an int. So. Yeah. Well, they wanted them ordered. So they. Although I guess they have the sequence column on there too, so maybe they. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway. Right. 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 They were disks. They were CD. They were. Sorry. Let me play that. They were floppy. They were floppies. <laughs> so. I, I don't. I don't think we should do this. This. We. Someone could look at this. I'm, this is. I agree. This is more interesting. Sorry. This is more interesting to me. And I think. Yes. I would rather I, someone spend their time improving media template to address any deficiencies in it than this, because I think most people just want it to work, and someone yeah. made it work and be better. I agree. Managing all these disk IDs is challenging. Which is why media uh, template is really nice. It would be great if Wix provided mechanisms to customize files. Something this like, is generic text, right? Yeah, sure. We already have a bug about this. And I yeah. think we should. It would be great if we had that. I'll do a bit if I can find it. That'd be great. All right. So where are we at? We're at 1321. 1321. Option to write IS metabase location to a property. Yeah, this is this is this is a little bit backwards. I would say this is it would be nice if there was a search um for Metabase. And I agree, it would be nice. There's a lot of things I wish the IS stuff did that it doesn't do, but. Uh, sorry, I don't know enough. Is Metabase. This is IS6, but there's, you know, being able to find the website that has the identity of this and pull it out and do all that kind of stuff. Okay, so if you take out the word Metabase, it still is useful. I think it is. It's. it's it, well, I think it is. There's apparently a. It is an IS Express. I haven't looked at IS. Anyway, there's a bunch of searches that would be good. I, that was certainly one of them. Feature to add project directory to Wix setup. Oh, project output. This is harvesting. Yes. Yes, project harvesting. Be great if that worked. And go dump that with all the other ones. Ah, oh, man, so much. Yeah, whatever. 
fix to XML file, XML config to support recursive operations. I don't know what that means. If I have author that change, oh gosh, I hate that syntax. Why did XPath have to use square brackets? It must not use square brackets. Anyway, uh, node value value that in my documents are many entries which matches this XPath expression. I should be able to replace them all in one single shot. Hmm, that's interesting. It's not recursive, it's multi-match. Ah, uh, that makes more sense. Yeah, so instead of select single nodes, select all nodes and then Right. That. Yeah, I'm not against that. I don't know what we'd have to do to change it, but I'm not exactly sure how this be, should be implemented without breaking the world, but yeah. I agree, that would be a nice thing to have. Pyro is overly aggressive. Seriously? <laughs> Just listen to his name. No. Uh, when building a patch, checks the entire transform mismatch key path that errors out. It doesn't take patch families into account. It prevents foul. Yeah, okay. I... I generally agree with that. It should validate the um, filter transform. Seems reasonable? Um, yes. So, I don't, it might already exist. I'm not sure. Fixed in the last six years? Something like that. Abstract underscore transform view and related patch uninstall tables. Wow. Oh, this would be a WCA util thing, I think. Yes, this would be a WCA util thing. It'd be interesting to do. Yeah, could try to do that. If someone wanted to. Patch on his lock smashes are so hard to write. Oh, that's why I see. Yes, so we could do that. Could be done in three X. Just be adding more code to WCA util. And good luck with that, because it's a pain to do it. The optional control should be shown during maintenance. No, they shouldn't. They should. There should be. There should be equivalents so, that you could show during maintenance. You want to put that in 3x then? Um, yeah, that would be additive. Yes. Sounds like it. Add support for relative patches and torch. Oh, huh. <laughs> Have this thing come up again. Isn't this melt? This is I mean no, basically or it's, it's or use bind paths, right? Yeah, yeah. So the answer is use bind paths and things work out a lot better and Yeah, okay. Or you have to actually the wix out, so yeah, no. Bind paths. Right? Yeah. yeah I agree. That's what they're designed for. Directory ref disk ID should default to directory disk ID. This works. Wait. No, I don't think so. Oh, it should default to one. That's true. Yes. Directory ref does not match the course parent directory, I guess, is out. No? Wait. Well, it's the reference, right? So if you have. Oh, reference. Yeah, no, history. it doesn't work that way. It does not yeah. work that way. That flows down your tree. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, and I, yeah, this is another case, I think, of making Media Template better. There's that, too. A lot of these old stuff about, I mean, Media Template better would be really nice. XSD gen global type based on that. Oh, oh nested simple types. Oh, I don't know how much I care. Uh, I guess we could take this. Uh, 
Um, yeah, we could do this. Basically, they're creating their XSD more complicated than the Wix XSD is defined, and XSD gen isn't handling, or it's generating stuff that ends up colliding in ways that it shouldn't. So, because the XSD, the Wix XSD is kind of interesting in that it's extremely flat the yeah. way we wrote it, which means XSD gen is fairly straightforward for it because it's very flat and it doesn't handle a lot of nested types. So, I, we could suspend this, honestly. And if someone wants yeah, to come back and do it, I'm fine with thank that. Thank you. I was sitting here going, wait, the, I'm hearing all good things. Simple, flat, make oh, it more yeah. complicated. No, yeah. I don't think so. Yeah, well, we could do it. So it's by working there for quiet execution actions. Ah, oh, do we do we do this yet? Yes. Good. I remember uh, this being around for a while. I think. Yeah. <laughs> No, that's again one of those things that just maybe I've just heard it so often that I go, hey, sure we have. No, still can't can't set the working directory for these things. Okay. Yeah, I was hoping there was some other property that would let you set the working directory or something. Good. Oh, we set the time out. Okay, well, that's not the worst that's part. Right. All right, cool. So, yeah, we could do that. Unknown preprocessor statements are ignored. I agree. Oh, well, I don't know. That's an interesting question. Should we preprocess? So, if they have other processing instructions in a Wix document, should we error? Sorry. Processing instructions or preprocessor statements? I think they're the same thing in this case. Well, I mean, so it's a processing instruction oh. that doesn't do the whatever. Right? Because the preprocessor recognizes a set. You could have another set that the preprocessor doesn't recognize and it ignores them. Which is what it does today. Right. That's what it does today. which I think is the right thing to do for processing instructions. It has the downside that if you miss, you have a typo, yeah, you yeah. a typo for a while. No, that's the downside. Um, no, I mean, I think the, given, given what they are in the XML world, I think it, it's correct to ignore them. So no. Uh, that would work for me. Okay. Do we really not error? I don't know. This would be a 4x thing if we change the behavior. I expect we let them through, so yeah. All right, native so image. Template. If we left, sorry, we're, we're, we're fixing that? Y yes, we're leaving it. Okay. I think, it's the, I think it's the right thing to do. Agreed. Native image should also process assembly names. Native image should be modified to also engine assembly names for cases where assembly dependent on those assemblies in a package are being updated. Assemblies dependent on those. This was a long time ago. If this hasn't been done now, I'm surprised that we need, oh, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> to also engine assembly names for cases when assembly is dependent 
on those assemblies in a package are being updated. Oh, RQ to priority three. Okay, I see. So they do get updated. It just takes a while for them to get updated. Um, hmm. Oh, I see. Th uh, this just lets them... This just lets them uh, manually author the updates, right? Because otherwise it happens automatically just at the wrong priority. Well, yeah, it, it's happening. It's just the priority is really slow and it's idle, which means you have to wait for who knows how long before it happens. Right, which means... This is, this is something about being able to list more files so that you could yeah get you know that it's that and then you go so this is a yeah okay i don't but i don't see i don't see how you're going to get you're not going to get complete coverage i mean perhaps if you're the only consumer well, it would be, I know this and I know that, and these are performance hotspots, therefore I need them done right away, otherwise I get X. See, right, you, you yeah. engine something new. You, you put a new thing down, you patch it, whatever, you engine it, and then you um, that invalidates the engine of a whole bunch of other assemblies, and you go for that, and it goes from there. And it's really no surprise that they're moving away from this kind of thing. Yeah, no, but I, I'm kind of in, like, uh, you know, we would have this by now because this is the Visual Studio team asking for this from a long time ago. Right. And they probably would have fixed it by now if it really maintained a consistent problem for them. Um, well. Yeah, I'll... I'll omit commentary. Well, I'm just saying Visual Studio is the largest managed app that I know of, and if they have perf problems, they probably would have tried to do something about it. I I'm inclined to suspend this and see if it comes back. Okay. Because it might, but whatever. XML file fails to parse with weird doc type. Oh, gosh, please, can we make doc type go away? Validate on parse. That seems wrong. Oh, I see. They're trying to get the doc type to be disabled. Um, and the only way to do that is to not validate at all? I that's, think that's what it's doing. Oh, uh, funny. But, you know, honestly, I don't know. Maybe XML file shouldn't bother validation. I mean, really, right? What's it going to do? It's just going to error during install because you, you know, you typed in the wrong stuff. Um, hmm. feels like something that would have to be opt-in. Um, it would if you expected XML file to catch the errors that the user would type in. Which it does today. True. Sorry, that's what I meant, meant by opt-in. It's a behavior change. So either it's you know got to go into 4X or it's got to be a switch. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah, right, which is what this says. I mean, he actually does say that. So, yeah, that. Or just don't send doc types and XSDs through. <laughs> Ugh. Or maybe we've already done it. Wouldn't surprise me if I've already done something like this. But, <coughs> We could take this in 3x. 
I, it's not, I can see it being a pain. But whatever. Thoughts? Uh, just what I've already said. We can take it in 3x as long as we can make it, Fine. you know, opt inable. Yep. It, it, you could opt in it. Opt it in. Opt in it. <laughs> We've got bits left in the bit field. Yes. Native code project reference preprocess support. We have that now. Yes, we do. Thank you for the C getting with the modern times of MS Build. All right, 1206. Let's stay 1206. Yes. All right. Patch added file sequence should be auto generated. Do we do this now? I thought we did this now. Sorry, I'm catching up. Um, we generate the patch, the the file sequence. Yes. But I don't. Mm, I don't know that we. All right, we don't do this. I I agree. I mean, John. I don't think we do the media thing. Yeah. I'm fine. It'd be cool if we did. Okay. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. Sorry, and I'm fine if that goes in 4x. Don't want to try to do it. Through. Probably need to put that in 4x now that I think about it. But it is, this kind of falls in my whole bucket of patching is still way too much of a pain. It'd be nice if it was better. Let's yes. say that. Oh, yes. Claims that PID subjects should say update to product name or similar. Uh, product yeah, name. but that shouldn't be done automatically. I mean, from a local perspective. Um, okay. So, I mean, we do some of this for summary information now, but you can loc it. Do we default to this? I don't know. The summary information stuff is a is a uh, is a, a mix. I'm gonna say a mess, but I think it's just a mix of stuff that is hard coded and stuff that is you know completely authorable yep. easily. Um, well, ideally, we should default everything to the reasonable defaults and call it good, which I appreciate will be English in some cases, but it's the summary information stream that nobody ever looks at, so. Hmm. But take it in four because I don't think we should surprise people with this in their patches. Um, um yeah, I guess. Again, there's all this little patch stuff I'd like to go through with a big thing. Oh, look, title shows the wrong thing. Right now, the value from product name is shown. Yeah, see, that doesn't surprise me either. This makes sense, because the other one says database for MSI or whatever. I think it's database yeah. for installer. I forget which it is. So, yes. Okay. Warn user when patch contains changed non-key path file. Oh, yeah, I could see that being interesting. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Might be like, oh, look, your patch isn't going to do anything. Have a nice day. We could do that in 3X. Yes, I think uh, so. A warning? Yeah, we could totally do that. Yeah, warning, sure. There should be a warning, and then they could go, yeah, yeah, I know, I have a custom action that does something stupid, or right. whatever. 
Extensions should be able to set the key path. They can. They can. I did that. I remember. Yes. It's a mess right now. Thank you. It is. The code's a mess. I was just in there. I'm glad we have oh, it, but still. Uh, it contains the code for comparisons of that. Shouldn't it allow wildcard for the header as well? Um, that would be a feature request. I suppose that's a reasonable feature request. You could say I want star header. Yeah, okay. I could see that. Yeah, it could be a 3x feature. Okay. It would be very nice. Well, see, someone even wants it. Yep. Complete MSMQ handling. Supports creation without checking if it already exists or the ability to remove queues as part of an install. That would surprise me. This should remove it. Oh, it's part of an install. Well, it probably doesn't do that. Right. Yeah. This this falls in that whole bucket we have of <laughs> the install doing repair, or upgrades, and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff, right? Basically. All right, yeah. Shove it in that bucket. I don't know who's going to go into MSMQ at this point, but yeah. Oh, more detail on permission element. This is a doc bug. Is this doc bug? Uh, with an oh. attachment. All right. Oh, whatever. Um, yeah, we could take that in 3x. If they have more detail and it's better than what we have, we should do that. Cool. Votive needs add as a link. Uh, we can now link stuff, so... I mean, we had bugs about, oh, no, it was other projects having links that we were having problems with. Um, this seems like a reasonable request for Votive. By Justin. Holy cow. We're still in the Justin days. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, this might work already. I don't know. Really? I know that I've been spending time in votive code that handles links. Oh, all right. But I might have just broken them, so maybe we should leave this open. <laughs> Is there a little drop-down arrow on the file add dialog or file add whatever? I don't know. All right. Well, then I get, it stays open. I don't see how it would have been added. In Thought. the intervening seven years? Yeah, right. Well... Seven years. Not seven years, it's just six and some. <laughs> six and nine months? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. No rounding. Up. See, I rounded down ish. Anyway, yes. Uh, I don't care. 3x, whatever you want. That works. All right. Add option to. Ing well, wait a minute. What does it say? Option for an include file that is always included. Oh, like. No. Yeah. No. No, they, they have the, like, I think MS Build has this. There's like a MS Build RSP or something. No, this is it, preprocessor. Very well. Well, no. But this is cryptic. No. It is not cryptic. You do a dash D and there it is. <laughs> Allow for D file name to define variables inside a file. It's all MS Build now. That's completely fair, yeah. No. We're not adding features to the preprocess for that kind of stuff. Do your misbuild stuff. Voter references should not be copied. It ends up in bin? No, that should not. It should not. No, this, this happens now. Yeah, this is fixed. Yes, this this is fixed now. Add show includes preprocessor. Oh. I think I think this is all gone with MS Build. But yeah, you don't get this. Oh. 
this is going to be a real pain. And the Duke, this doesn't even work in MS build this way. I'm inclined does, to suspend this. Does MS, or sorry, do our targets no. correctly identify and include files as dependencies? No, it probably doesn't today. Okay. Um, well, uh, it might. I have to go look. I mean, I agree that this is not the you know this switch is not the right way to do it. You know, we want to track it like we track the other files that are inputs into the build, right? Yeah. Um. Am I okay? I'm in. Uh, what am I looking at? Looking real quick here. Oh, yeah. Oh, include is not a good word to search for in a target file. Not so much. Yeah, it, it's hard to do include files. This is why you have the show includes thing. Right. Because you can have like include search paths and all kinds of stuff. Yep. And I don't, and MS Build, the C++ projects don't support doing this anymore in MS Build. Um, from what I've seen. In, in MS in, Build. In and out of there, yes. But um, do they, do they support headers getting as, as part of their inputs. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I don't know. No. Not for headers that are included elsewhere. I, it's not wrong we could do all this work. Uh, we could put it, it, it's a lot of work. And you have to use something that is in this build, I think, for it to really work, given the way you have to call it. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm inclined to say, well, I don't care. I'm inclined to suspend it, but whatever. But I, I don't like the include files in general, so that's my natural bias. Oh, that's... Oh, you know what? Uh, yeah, 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 that's true. Although, you know, the truth is everyone has at least one, right? You know, there's some shared thing with your... Version you know, information or something. Shared yeah. name, shared version, yeah, all that. Um... I, I'm I'm interested in this only to the extent that updating that shared header should work when you trigger an incremental build. Oh, it does. It does. Oh. Wait, doesn't it? Something. All right, we can keep this open. There, there's there's actually I forget. There's now the T log stuff, and I don't remember if this gets yeah. in the T log or not. Okay. That's that's how this is done. It's not done this way anymore. It's done through the T log, and it may or may not work for include files. Okay. Um, open it is then. So. Yeah. Um, all right. Real quick, last one here. Five minutes over. To register .NET components, you need to set improc to MS Core E. Oh. Yeah, I could see that being interesting. So it's the ability to say to reference a file that's being gacked. That's what this is. Yes. Um. That, 
I, I don't think I would say it this way. I would say that we maybe come up with a way of specifying that you can you know, manage code as a class element or something like that. But I, yeah, that, but, yeah, yeah. It'd be interesting. All right, cool. I think we're done there at ten seventy eight. Ten seventy eight. Oh, you got it already, right? Yes. All right. So, wow, you only missed one so far. That's awesome, Bob. You've been keeping up. Am I? Wow. Thirteen forty eight. So we're at one sixteen, huh? Or, I guess one fifteen, right? If I right. I'm doing my math right here. Um. Yeah, that button's not gonna work. Um. So that puts us at what? Uh, what do we start at? 150 something? 59. 159. So yeah, 159. To 115, I'm saying. No, here's another one, too. 114. So that got us 45 oh, bucks? Yeah. 45 bucks? Right there? Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, that's a bummer. That's not bad. All right. So, but still, we're in the low hundreds, which I guess is kind of what I wanted. There you go. So, yes. Excellent. Excellent. All right. So next year we'll get back to a status meeting and talk about some of the stuff we're going to be doing there. I think we'll actually talk about 4.0 a little bit and things moving forward in that. Um, and we'll, of course, have triage after all that meetings um, and pick up where we left off since we have a couple bugs up here that are missing. So and that first meeting will be on Thursday, right? Yes, that's in two days. So the new year is tomorrow and on to uh, 2014. And hopefully an even better year than 2013. They that keep works. getting better, then it keeps getting more awesome all the time. So on that note, I hope you guys all have a wonderful New Year's Eve party. Be safe. Um, if you're not already partying it up right now, which I guess some people are already into tomorrow. So uh, have a wonderful time, and uh, we'll talk to you in two days. <laughs>